What's up, everybody? Welcome back. Another another week, another week of AEW Dynamite review. Sorry we couldn't make last week, but we're back here today, November 18th, 2020. So let's just get into it. How are you doing, man? Pretty good, pretty good, man. Uh, how about yourself? Same old, same old, you know. This, this year is just cruising on by, nothing going on. It's a regular old year, that kind of thing. Almost yeah, the end. Going well, isn't it? Oh, almost yeah. the end of the year too. Which, wow. Um, yeah, 2020, I'm really gonna miss it. 2020 actually went by quickly for me. Even though it didn't uh, go quickly for most people, I felt like it went. I felt it went by pretty quickly for me, anyway. Yeah, I guess it went by quick enough. I mean, uh, you know, a steady stream of bad news. Uh, I guess uh, accelerates the the time for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, what did you think of this AEW Dynamite show on tonight? Uh, I liked it. I thought it was pretty good, top to bottom. But um, okay. yeah, I know. I, speaking, uh, to you, speaking to you beforehand, it's uh, I, I, I a minority there. I didn't. I wouldn't say it was a bad show, but I think I thought it was pretty mediocre. I wouldn't. I wouldn't uh, recommend this to anybody who. If this was going to be their first foray into AEW, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend this episode. But not bad, but just if you're not already a fan, you're probably not going to probably like this. Mm. What, yeah? No? Uh, no. I got to disagree okay. with that one, but yeah. So you would re so if you weren't an AEW fan and I told you to watch the show, you'd be like, "Oh man, I can't wait for next week. AEW baby." Buy me some I shirts. I didn't. No, you're putting words in my mouth. I didn't say it was the well, best. That's what I, I, well, that's yeah. what I said. I said I wouldn't yeah. recommend this to someone who wasn't a fan. And you said I disagree with you there. I think it's a pretty good showcase of what Dino, okay. what to expect on Dynamite compared to some a lot that we've seen lately. So then you uh, would recommend it then? I would recommend it, yes. To but... someone who has never watched AEW. Yeah, I could say this was okay. you know, good enough product. Above average. Yeah. Well, there you go. So we'll start off with the Young Bucks versus Top Flight. And this was my match of the night. Was this... What did you feel about this one? This is my match of the night, too. I, yeah. uh, I agree with you on that. Yeah. Finally, some sense out of you. So we've got uh, Darius and Dante Martin. And they've been on AEW Dark. But since I don't watch AEW Dark, I haven't seen them before. But we've... Luckily... We get a video package of them, and they tell the story of how they uh, were young. They wrestling fans when from 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 when they were little kids. Uh, they message the young bucks, you know, hey, you know, like we're a tag team, you, you know, we love we love a shot in AEW, and here they are. They're twenty one and nineteen, so I guess they're. Uh, they mentioned that uh, Dante, the younger one, who's uh, who's nineteen, is the youngest star to appear on AEW Dynamite what it seems like right yeah that was shocking when they i mean just by looking at them obviously they're pretty young but i would have never guessed they were 21 and 19 uh yeah shockingly yeah good for them i mean they, they reached out and, for, they, and they got a shot for two guys who are 21 and 19 they look like uh look like they've got 10 15 years of experience these guys were great i thought they were i thought they were fantastic yeah the highlight reel really showcased what they were able to do they were fast in the ring you know it's obvious it's a highlight reel so you're just going to see the best of what they do but they they brought it to the bucks yep. you know uh they weren't they weren't uh shrinking in the moment uh they weren't scared by the spotlight they were they were they were a good team um obviously of, i'll let you get into the technical aspects of it but out yeah, of all it was, it was out match. of all the uh the wrestlers that i've never heard of or haven't seen before that has debuted on aew just off the top of my head, I think these guys might be the most impressive. I mean, I know Private Party made a really good impression on me the first time I saw them. Um, even though I really liked Darby the first time I saw him, I was kind of like, ah, uh, I was kind of iffy on on him. So, I mean, just for people I didn't know about before, and the first time seeing them, I was like, these guys are, these guys are spectacular. I mean... Yeah, so we start off with Darius, the older brother, and he's in there with Nick to start. So story in the beginning is the the young guys, uh, top flight, are countering all of the Bucks' moves, and they're beating them on speed. 
And finally, Matt makes a blind tag, and this allows the Bucks to hit a series of their signature moves to get control. They uh, do a super kick party. Uh, Matt does the head scissors, and Nick uh, kicks the other guy in the head. Then they do the bulldog into the single leg drop kick combo. And then uh, later on in the match, Darius gets the hot tag, takes over. Uh, top flight hits dual dives on the Bucks on the outside. They hit assisted slice of bread off the top rope. Um, the Bucks do assisted slice of bread off the top rope on, onto Dante, but Darius makes a save. Dante rolls Matt up after a more bang for your buck attempt, but the Bucks regroup. They hit the BTE trigger for the win. And yeah, um, this is review is not really doing this match justice. This was all action from the opening bell to the to the end of the match. Not really uh, any second of rest. These guys were just going at it top speed the entire time, and I thought it was great. You know. Yeah, agreed. I um. I would have never guessed that these guys are as young as they were, as are, are as young as they were, and that they've never been on dynamite. The way that they wrestled the Bucks, they they were they were in control of everything, um, you know, at least their own actions. And it was a great match. I, I give them credit. They have a bright future, yeah. not just in AEW, but but wrestling. So they have uh, they replaced uh, Private Party as the young up and coming tag team, <laughs> hot tag team. Do you think that's a good question? You know they. I feel like these guys, Top Flight, are a little bit crisper in the ring. But I think uh, Private Party has definitely more personality right now. Mm-hmm. Better character going on. I mean, you know, to be fair, Darius and Dante, they're just... This is the first time we've ever seen them. So we haven't really... You know, and they just had a match. So we didn't... Haven't really got to see much of their personality or their character work. But yeah, as of right now, I, I, think, I think they're a little bit crisper than Private Party. I could see I could see you making that argument. Um I I think you're right. At least for at least for their moves and how they portray themselves and how they wrestle. That was yeah. definitely crisp crisper than Private Party from what I've seen. Um uh, a Private Party obviously has that character they built up, so we'll see how it goes. I pure uh yeah. pure athleticism wise, Mark Quinn, of course, is the best out of the four, but I think uh this ring wise, they, they they this top flight, they've got something. I'm excited to, see, I'm excited to see more of them. I'm happy. Yeah, it'll I be like, good. It'll I be like good these guys. Grow up. Yeah, good. So that, that was a good signing by AEW. For sure. Are are they signed? Did they announce that they're signed, or are they just like here for matches? Oh, I don't know. that's a good question. Did I we get the are. Did we get the top flight is all elite tweet from them? I I don't know if we did or not, but I thought they were. I, maybe maybe that was last week they said that, but. If they didn't, they should. Yeah, they should. Absolutely. I mean, I'll, I tune in to, the, to watch these guys again. But up next, well, not up next. Oh, you forgot one thing. You forgot but, one thing. What? Top Flight was attacked by Hybrid 2 after the match. Yeah, that's why I said af- up next, but oh, no, wait, okay. before that, the Hybrid 2 oh, attack you. Top Flight after the match, and then the Bucks <laughs> run them off. Nick shakes Darius' hands afterward and asks the crowds to give it up for Top Flight, which the crowd does. So we've got the card for tonight. Cody and Darby Allen in our main event versus Brian Cage and absolute Ricky Starks. We've got a contract signing between John Moxley and Kenny Omega for Winter is Coming. Okay? Um, yeah. They Pac- got a name for that dynamite now, I guess. Yep. Pac is taking on the blade. Serena Deeb versus Thunder Rosa in an NWA women's title match. Kip Sabian versus Orange Cassidy and the Inner Circle slays Las Vegas. So this is coming up right now, in fact, the part one of the Inner Circle in Las Vegas. So they're playing Black Jeff. MJF switches one of Sammy, Sammy's cards with one of his. I'm pretty sure that's illegal as hell and would get them kicked out right away. But this is a this is a TV segment, so whatever. Uh, Hager and Wardlow are staring each other down still. I don't think they probably haven't stopped staring each other down till this day. Uh, MJF and Jericho are one upping, one upping each other, ordering drinks just like they did with the steaks. So they eventually order Everclear. They they tank it. Out, son of a bitch! And well, what do you know? Conan makes an appearance. And they see a dragon, but it's just a dude in a dragon con costume. And since they're drunk, they think it's a real dragon. 
Sammy tells MJF he hates them, but they're drunk, so they all laugh it off. And then Wardlow and Jake start beating up random idiots. I I thought this was cool. Um, it wasn't wasn't spectacular, but you know, entertaining. You know, it was all it was all right. I like the you? segment. Yeah, I I like that AEW. Uh, this and the way that they filmed and set up the whole MGF. Uh, Chris Jericho, you know, lay dinner. Uh, lay dinner, lay debonair. Lay, lay dinner, debonair. I like that it proves that AEW can do more than just film wrestling. Yeah, uh, just like, wacky, yeah. just fun stuff, you know? Yeah, it, was, it wasn't It was going to win any awards for yeah. any kind of cinematography or anything, but I like that they were able to tell a story and it was, you know, coherent what was going on. Um, I like that they continued with the stories of how Sammy hates MJF, Wardlow and Hager are still trying to kill each other, you know, and how MJF is, you know, if you didn't know, was just kind of an asshole, obviously more yeah. than anyone, anyone else, like stealing Sammy's, Sammy's cards and stuff like that. I, I like the segment. It was, it was good. It's interesting that they're going to have a part two, obviously, later on, but I guess they had enough that they could fill two segments in this Dynamite with it. Yeah, it was. So. Yeah, it was okay. It's probably uh, not as good as most of the the other MJF Jericho or Inner Circle segments, but it was still good. Nothing wrong with it. Um, so then we've got a video f- uh, for Boundless Story of AEW. I don't know if this is this a documentary or is this a what is this? You know, I looked it up and I could only find that it was a trailer. They just said it was a trailer, but they didn't say it was for anything else. For was. what? exactly i don't know i i I guess it's just i guess it's just a i i couldn't tell you i i almost think it's just a commercial that they filmed with you know with extra but it's a yeah it's just a story a bunch of different AEWs talking about their background how you know how they struggled their wrestling career you know uh just you know how they didn't make i guess they talk about the other big company wwe and how they they went up against them and blah 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 and it's like okay you know stop talking about wwe already jesus <laughs> christ like we we don't care just 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 do your thing kind of weird yeah it, it, it i mean i get it i get it that you know in real life some of these guys are guys and girls are probably bitter about how wwe treated them or how wwe never contacted them for a shot or whatever but enough already a- aew never mind wwe and never mind nwa for that matter just saying just saying you want to add anything to what... that no i get what you're saying i uh i understand bring in some new japan whatever that is I was gonna say, how do you know about that? This is the internet. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, it, it it doesn't come off as I wouldn't say I wouldn't go so far as to say it comes off as desperate, but all you do is you distract from what you're trying to bring every time you talk about the other promotion, right? And all you do is remind yeah. everybody that you're number two. Yeah, it, it you should be doing your own thing. And that's what people are tuning in for because you're doing your own thing. They yeah. don't need to be reminded that, hey, we're not WWE. Yeah, we know. We get it. You don't need to keep saying that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of why so. we're watching. Yeah, exactly. So uh, I could have done without the references to WWE, but the commercial itself was fine. Yeah, I, it was I just cool. don't know what it's for. I just don't know what it's for. I, yeah, I've, I've been trying to find information about it, but. More than anything, yeah. that kind of was annoying where it's like, well, what is this for? Is this a documentary? Is this a movie? Or... Is it just this and we're ne- we'll never see anything more about this again? Or like, what the hell is this all about? Anyway, Moxley yeah. talks. So he talks about his dad. Uh, one day his dad picked him up from the police station and he said, son, we're the good guys. No matter what happens, they try to lie. They try to cheat. They try to steal. But we're the good guys. So he always knows what to do. And this is in reference to why he's uh, been able to keep the AEW championship because he's the good guys. So no matter what they throw at him, he's the good guys. He knows what to do. He knows how to, uh, you know, conduct himself in the proper way. He's got a pregnant wife at home, which 
as far as I know, is the announcement that uh, congrats to them. That was a shock. <laughs> that Renee is pregnant. So congrats to John and Renee for you know upcoming first child. And I looked it up. Yeah, that was pretty much the announcement. That I know he, he just glossed pregnant. right over it. Yeah. <laughs> so he's got you know he's got a pregnant wife at home. He's got two titles on two different continents, and he knows that he is the best wrestler in the world. And he is his father's son, and he's John bleeping damn Moxley. And we've got the contract signing for Winter is Coming, coming up. So before that, we've got Miro on commentary for Orange Cassidy versus Kip Fabian. So I'll, I'll, I want to know what you thought about this match. This was my dud of the night, actually. Ooh, the dud of the night. Yeah. I, uh... I am not going to give this one the dud of the night, but... <laughs> I have a feeling I know which one you're going to give that of the night. I, There's you not are, many matches. There's not many matches. There this, wasn't too many matches so. on this show. Yeah. But yeah. So why was this your dud of the night? And I think I know what you're going to say, but I'll let you say it. I just expected more. Um, okay, that's not what know, I thought you were going to say. <laughs> well, for one, Orange Cassidy's been overexposed. There right? it is. Yeah, that, exactly. I know we've been saying it for months now. He's been overexposed, and now he's wrestling Kip because of this you know, pseudo rivalry with he, best friends and Miro. He bumped into him or Penelope or something happened. Yeah, I, I can't even remember. It's such a random reason. Like the whole fact of what this rivalry is built on is it's wrestling. I get it. Is it's a little too ridiculous though. Um, beyond the fact that he's been overexposed, I just didn't. I just didn't like this match. I, I really expected more from both of them. Like. It felt like it was off at points. You expected more from Kip? Because he's never really that impressive. I mean, he's not bad, but he's yeah. never... He's, he's, not a, he's not one of the standouts. Yeah, that's true. You're, you're, not, you're not far off on that one. I, he's gotten better, though. And I expected, you know, a match between him and Orange. Somewhat similar styles to be able to keep my attention. But it just felt like I kept waiting for them to do more. And it just... It just never got to that next gear, I guess. And then it was over. And I was like, okay, great. Uh, yeah. You know, it was okay, okay, average. So I think, uh, I think Orange Cassidy is a case of the people wanted more and then we got, they gave them too much. Yeah. You know, I mean, you, you see Orange Cassidy stick in, your, stick in his matches and you're like, oh, God, I want to see more of that. And then you, watch, you see another one. It's like, oh, I want to see more of that. And eventually... Since he's on, he's wrestling in almost every week. It's kind of like, oh, I've seen this a thousand times now. Yeah, they Which should. kind of yeah. bad for him. They shouldn't be using him more than once every month. Once every three weeks if you're pushing it. Yeah, and if without, a, him every without week, a crowd, it hurts yeah. too. Yeah, if you're using him every week, like, I, I don't mind seeing him every week, you know, but he should not be wrestling every week unless he's a championship holder. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It makes no sense. So, uh, oh, but... so anyway, the match, uh, the beginning is Kip won't let Orange put his hand in his pockets no matter what. He tries. Kip puts him in a headlock. He tries. He grabs his arm. He just won't, he just won't let him put his hand in his pocket. So finally, Kip tries a drop toe hold, but Cassidy does not go down. Puts his hand in his, in his pocket, dodges a bunch of move, does his drop kick, Kip up. So he hits a, uh, what's his face? Orange hits a tope, but Penelope blocks him from getting back in the ring. Orange Cassidy gives her a double high five. <laughs> Enough time for Sabian to recover, take control of the match, and they go to break. Back from the break, Orange Cassidy tries a diving DDT, reverses, but Kip reverses, but he eventually does get a diving DDT. Kip hits a suplex and a penalty kick for two. Michinoku driver with a cradle for two. Orange reverses a draping suplex for two. Orange does a mouse trap and then gets to three. And this part, what happens after the match, almost made this match like totally worth it. As soon as the ref hits three, oh. Miro he sprints to the ring, jumps over the ropes, and just clotheslines Orange Cassidy into next week. And Orange, yeah, Orange like flips and spins in the air after this clothesline. <laughs> This was so great. 
Oh, and as, as, I, I, yeah. as Tony Schiavone puts it, he wiped him out. But <laughs> holy crap, that was a a beautiful clothesline. It was the fun, The best part was Miro. Like he didn't even say anything or like, oh crap, you know, Kip lost. I'm gonna go get him or anything like that. It's just as soon as the ref hits three, he just t- throws his head side. He sprints to the ring and he just clotheslines him. <laughs> yeah, so, that, uh, I expected that, but. Yeah, he expected no that. No build. I mean, it's not like, you know what? I'll be, you know, I can't let this happen. Like, he just, like, yeah. And, and done. Miro is more known as a, a power guy, right? So you expect him to, like, be all pissed off, huffing and puffing down to the ring and then attack Orange Cassidy. Nope. He jets to the ring. He's from that commentary booth into the ring, clotheslining Orange Cassidy. He, he might have beaten the. The 40-yard dash record on this one. Oh, it was like three seconds. It was so yeah. fast. Like two seconds. It was ridiculously fast. <laughs> like, I was shocked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like he was, uh, I don't know. It was <laughs> It was so fast, though. And that was really good. So the best friends come out, and they run him off. They do the hug thing. And Orange is, re- but Orange is reeling from the clothesline. So after the hug, he goes back down. Which is a nice touch. Cool. Selling the, selling the clothesline. Yeah, I, I, yeah, that, that was that was good. That was a good touch because I think anyone would be completely decked after that closed line. Yep. So after that, we've got the world contract, world title contract signing. They do Kenny's entrance. He says, like John Moxley, he's been PWI's number one. But unlike John Moxley, he is a Wrestling Observer Hall of Fame, and he trained at some gym in North Carolina. <laughs> so Kenny comes out. Looking like a million bucks in a suit in his shades. Looks like a total bad guy. Mox's music hits, but nobody comes out. So they go to the back. Moxley is laid out in the back with a bloody nose. Which doesn't make sense because Mox doesn't make his entrance from the back. But anyway, that's a minor tidbit. So Kenny is not having this. He's not impressed with this at all. He says, you know... He's not one for games. Last time it was the elbow, and this time it's a bloody nose. Takes his head and he signs the contract. So he's referencing the last time. Where were they going to face? Where were they going to face at? All, all out, right? Yeah, and it couldn't be. Uh, <coughs> and he couldn't because John Moxley uh, had a staff, had a staff infection, infection in his elbow. Yeah. So now he's got a bloody nose. So they're going to they're gonna go back to that. Go back and reference the past, which is also nice. Anything you want to add on this one? I wasn't crazy about this segment, you know? I, really? I don't know. Like, yeah, like, this was thought, one thing that I felt kind of flat for me. I like, thought it was fine. I didn't think it was necessarily good or bad. Um, it, I don't, I, I just, I just wish there was more from Omega from what happened. I, I, I kind of wish there was like a back and forth almost with him and Shivani. I, I, I guess I'm yeah, just asking. Too I, much, I guess like, could. Shibani should have been like, hey, you, so you don't... You I'm kind of wondering, or, yeah. like, why did they not imply that Kenny did it? Yeah, exactly. That's that's another thing that could have come up. Like, Shibani's like, so you don't know anything about what happened? Like, it's really odd, because he's going to be wrestling you in two weeks. You know, I'm not saying explicitly he accuses Kenny, but it just felt like, hey, uh, what happened? Oh, I don't know. Uh, here we go. Okay, we'll see ya. I <laughs> mean, it's... Even if it turns out it's it's you know if it turns out to be like Shaq or something, then, <laughs> you know, why isn't it at, Mike Tyson? Yeah, why yeah. wasn't why isn't it a little bit suspicious that hey, uh, how come he's beat up in the background? Who who has the motive for this? Other yeah. than other than everybody, because it, John is the champion. But you know, that's true. You you do bring up a good point. I mean, he's you know got his fair share of enemies, so. It just felt odd. I, I get the angle they're trying to push. He got beat up before he could make the the contract signing, but it was I don't know. And then Kenny signed the contract anyway. Yeah. <laughs> and he had trouble. Like that didn't help. It was just it just all didn't come together. Like he had trouble with the pen. Yeah, it seemed like he wrote a paragraph instead of just signing his name, right? Yeah. It's like, I was like, I don't know what's going on here. Uh, so, I I think the biggest thing to come out of that, other than Moxley getting attacked, was. It looks like Kenny's kind of back to his cleaner persona, right? With the glasses uh, and everything. That's what they're saying. The, yeah. the, the girl's got the brooms. Yeah. And the glasses are really kind of pushing that to the, to the next level. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, yep. 
So we've got uh, the Inner Circle in Vegas Part 2, and Jericho announces the Inner cir Circle is now stronger with their new member, Elvis. And nothing, there's few things I dislike more in this world than Elvis impersonators. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't stand Elvis impersonators. It's like, of all the people to, imp like, why is this guy the one that's impersonated? the most out of why aren't there more Michael Jackson impersonators? I mean, I know why now because of the allegations in his later your own question there. allegations later in his life. But seriously, why are there no more before that? Why were there no more Michael Jackson impersonators? I mean, Michael Jackson is way cooler than Elvis. And I, I dare anyone to, to disagree. I won't go either way. I just think it's because Elvis is think... so recognizable for so long. His? But it's kind of, I don't know. I just think it's kind of like, I don't want to get into it, though. But I just don't like Elvis impersonators. Let's just leave it at that. So MJF says he loves Sammy and they're blood brothers. And Sammy's like, yeah, yeah, we're blood brothers. I'll cut myself. And he's got like a blade to his wrist and they're like no 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 and then they all howl at the moon and then uh they do their ha hangover parody jericho wakes up next to elvis mjf wakes up he makes fun of sammy who's sleeping in a small fountain that must have sucked if he was over he was sleeping in a fountain for the entire night skin is probably so gross from being wet all night you know but mjf's got uh writing all over his face Ortiz is kind of crazy. He's just lifting weights. In the most ridiculous outfit. Weird, yeah, really crazy. Um, Santana's just sitting down in a threshold with a bunch of animals, and they hear crying, and they open a door, and Brad Williams is crying on the floor in a diaper. And so, yeah, it's a hangover ripoff, which was... Uh, I thought this kind of fell flat for me. I didn't really... I knew where they were going immediately with the hangover thing, and it was just kind of like, eh, whatever. But then Jericho is at the commentary desk, and he announces himself and Jake Hager will take on SCU, Frankie and Christopher Daniels, next week. And anything you want to add about the part two of the Inner Circle in Vegas? I didn't like it as much as part one. I agree with you there. I thought it was a little too over the top. Nah, it, nah. it was kind of unoriginal. I don't know. It was funny enough, but it was weird. Um, yeah. One thing I would, that I uh, I wouldn't say it was too ahead. bad, but it was kind of like, uh. yeah. One one thing that uh was kind of odd, I guess, as you go on to the next segment, you can, you know, uh, uh, you know, go deeper into detail on that. They had Chris Jericho at the commentary desk talking about Jericho and Hager versus SCU. So I was like, hey, great, Jericho is going to be commentating, and then he's gone. <laughs> yeah, I was like. What, what's the point of that? He was literally on the commentary desk for 30 seconds. I'm not even exaggerating. They're like, hey, what happened? Oh, yeah, it was crazy, you know, but the inner circle's strong. And we're going to prove it because we're going to take out SCU next week. And it's like, oh, great. You know, commercial break. Jericho's gone. It's like, right. okay, what was the point? And he's gone because we have Eddie Kingston on commentary for a pack versus the Blade. And this one was my, I guess, second dud of the night. Second dud of the night, huh? Yeah. Uh, yeah, not first place dud of the night, but second place dud of the night. I thought the match itself was okay, but it I kind of thought it was dumb. Like, this is Pac's match, first match in eight months. He should have just beat the crap out of the Blade. I got to disagree with you there. I, I mean, I the, blade, saying, like the Blade was in that bunkhouse match last week. They're still saying he's all injured. He's got the... The bandage he's over the, his head, yeah. and so he's beat up from last week. So why didn't Pac just beat the crap out of him? I think it would have done more damage to Blade than help Pac's image. Because we already know Pac's a badass. You know what I mean? And then they he went 50-50 yeah. with the Blade, so he's not that much of a bla badass anymore. Is he? They can make it up for the fact that he was gone for eight months, right? Like, I, They're trying to build something, obviously, with We'll get into that, but they're trying to build something obviously with Pac against Kingston, 
And we can't, at least in my opinion, they can't have Blade being some pushover if we're going to take Kingston seriously as the leader of that faction. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, so if they had, yeah. if Pac is the serious leader of his own thing, then he should have beat the crap out of the lackey, the Blade. Anyway, there was one part that I thought was really stupid in this match. So as the match starts, it starts off perfect the way it should be. He immediately gives the Blade a shotgun drop kick, and he's just stomping the Blade, and Eddie's like, hey, you know, like, this is not... You know, ref, you know, of course it's Bryce Rensburg, you know, he's complaining about that. Which it kind of makes sense. It's like, why is all of Eddie Kingston and all his and all the boys' matches have Bryce Rensburg in the in the uh in the refing the matches in it? It's like I kind of feel like there's a yeah. There's a conspiracy and Eddie Kingston <laughs> is just kind of right on this one. He's on to something. Yeah. So this is the part that I thought was really stupid. Pac, in the beginning of the match, he's just beating the crap out of the blade, as he should be. And then he jumps outside for no reason, stares down the butcher, and that's when the blade kicks him in the head with a baseball slide from out of nowhere. I was like, what a dumbass. You're beating the crap out of the blade, and then you go to jump outside just to stare down the butcher? For what? Butcher wasn't interfering, or he wasn't trying to distract the ref, trying to distract pot grab his leg or anything like that this was pointless and like a dumbass he got kicked in the head for it so yeah i don't know i guess i can go to why he had such a hard time with blade because he kept going outside he went after alley too i don't know he went yeah. after Bla he went after butcher a couple times more yeah so yeah. I, I and they really weren't interfering i mean they weren't interfering like marco stunt does so i don't know what the i don't know what the deal is but yeah blade hits a doctor bomb for two and they go to a break, and back from the break, the blade is in control, but then Pac hits a superplex for two, and Pac goes to the top for the black arrow, but the bunny gets on the apron. The ref goes to kick her off. Butcher gets in there, interferes. The blade gets a roll-up with a handful of tights, but it's only a two count. Pac takes control, hits a shooting star, press into a brutalizer for an instant tap. So I like the finish of that. You know, I like that the brutalizer got an instant tap out on the blade. Yeah. That and shit. Then, yeah. And then this part was another one, you know, uh you know, like Pac is on the mic and then Eddie Kings is like, he's staring at me. He's staring at me. That was good. And then before he even really says anything, the butcher just attacks him from behind. <laughs> which I thought was uh dumb for Pac pack, but I thought it was funny. I thought it was cool because it's like Normally, when wrestlers do that and then they start talking and then the guy will attack, but it's like Butcher's like, I'm not even going to let this guy talk. I'm just going to attack him now. <laughs> and that was pretty cool. Kingston goes to the ring. Uh, the Butcher and the Blade hold Pac, and Eddie Kingston gets in his face. And he starts jaw jacking him. And then Phoenix comes in and attack the, attacks the Butcher and the Blade and Eddie Kingston, but the numbers take over. So they're now beating up Pac and Phoenix. And then Penta comes in with a chair. And it looks like he's going to whack Phoenix with the chair. But nope. He goes after Eddie Kingston and the Butcher and the Blade. And Eddie jump outside the ring. They run off. And it looks like the Death Triangle is back. Or are they? Mm, ah, what is I didn't think of that. That's true. Now that you put that put that because, out there because we never did see even though he went after eddie kingston he never did actually hit eddie kingston with a chair which is a very important part of turning on someone which we may see later in the night mm. but yeah foreshadowing eddie, huh a little bit of yeah. foreshadowing there a little huh? bit of foreshadowing by aw well, what did you think of this match i liked it uh like i said before i thought it showcased both of them uh i could see why maybe Pac didn't put away blade as much be or as quickly as he could have because it was ring rust and so on and so forth and i think it kind of furthers the story that blade is enough of a threat that Pac just can't roll over him i think it would have i think if they just squashed blade it would look really bad for both him as a singles wrestler which isn't as big a deal but him as a tag team wrestler too you know especially after they lost last week too two in a row i, I don't know I mean, he lost, don't get me wrong, but if he lost in a squash match like that, it would have been it would have been really detrimental, I think, to them. So 
I, I thought I thought it, it proved its point. I thought it did well. And the whole end segment came a little faster than I was expecting, honestly. I thought they were going to build a little bit more to this death triangle versus, I don't know, what, whatever they call themselves, the Kingston crew or something. Eddie but, Kingston and the boys. Eddie Kingston and the boys. But the family. The family. or Family. Or La whatever. Familia. I don't know. Yeah. But it well, was they good. don't have... I, yeah. yeah. Hey, but wait, that, we go, go to the we go to the back, and Brandy's on the ground with her arm in a chair, and then Jade from last week is gonna stomp on the chair and break Brandy's arm, and the uh, referees are trying to get and and inter- and stop this from happening, but Nyla Rose and Vicky are blocking the refs. After Nyla, I guess is okay with Vicky after what happened at Full Gear. Uh, Vicky was kind of pissed at Nyla for not winning the title back and got in her. Didn't she slapped Nyla too, didn't she? Yeah, she did. She slapped her. Yeah, yeah. But I guess they're just okay with each other. And the refs are trying to save Brandy from getting her arm broken. But the camera guy sure isn't because he's on the other side. <laughs> so he does nothing to save Brandy. And He's just a journalist, man. He can't interfere. Yeah. <laughs> I guess, but I mean, if this were a real situation, like let's just say this wasn't like uh, AEW was like a like a like a soft drink company, and they were filming a commercial or something, and then some some girl just comes in and beats up your um, chief branding officer and puts her arm in a chair and is about to stomp you're just on gonna it. Film the whole time. And you're, you're just gonna film the documentary. You're not gonna try to stop this, like. <laughs> Yeah, that would probably be your last day on the job. If this were if this were real, but you know, eh, it's wrestling, so whatever. But I just thought it was funny. It's like here's Nyla and, and uh, Nyla and Vicky blocking all these refs, and then the camera guy is just filming it. Like it would have, like you know, it could have been where the camera guy was in the back of the refs too, filming over the refs. Like, hey, you know what's going on? But I see what you're no, the camera guy is just right there. He could have stopped it anyway. Uh, Jade stomps on the chair, breaks Brandy's arm, and that's that's it. Okay. So here comes the dud of the night. The NWA title. Serena D versus Thunder Rosa. And I've been very vocal about this whole NWA women's title thing being more prominent on the show than the AEW women's title. Yeah. So I think that was... Uh, part of the reason why I didn't like this match, but another reason why I didn't wa- like this match is like it just wouldn't end. There were so many times where it was like, this is the end of the match, but it wasn't. But what were your thoughts on this one? I do agree with you that the match was overly long. Um, but as a showcase for two women's wrestlers, I thought they did pretty good. You know, I honestly think one of the reasons they keep putting these NWA wrestlers and this belt on the line in Dynamite is because overall they're just better than a lot of the AEW women's wrestlers. I'm afraid to say, you know, Hikaru. That, that, that's not. Yeah, that's not. Yeah. Brit, other than Hikaru and Nyla, yeah. I think Nyla's gotten. Yeah, Nyla. Uh, Nyla's, Nyla's gotten, gotten way better. Like I think when Nyla, when the AEW first started, I thought Nyla sucked, but I think she's pretty damn good yeah, now. Yeah, she's gotten better for sure. I mean, you're looking at like th- uh, three or four wrestlers out of a roster of, what, maybe 20 women? Um, and you put any of the two other than the top four together, and it's just like, man, like, it's just, yeah. I don't know, very sloppy. So I-, I can see why they, I can see one reason, if that's the case, why they would continue to push the NWA uh, belt and these wrestlers for that reason. It was overly long, I'll admit that, but I didn't see too many sloppy spots. I didn't see too many... You know mishaps. Uh, I thought it was. You're good. right. You're right in that that aspect. But I I'll go and I'll say this. Just like the blood and just like Markle stunt interfering. It's just like mm, let much. we need to we need to focus on the AEW Women's Champion. I'm sorry. I mean they put on such a half, not even half, not even quarter. Like I don't know what they what you want. Such a terrible effort into building Nyla and Hikaru for full mm-hmm. gear. It's like now we're back to the NWA title. Come on, like give Hikaru something or why the hell have an AEW women's champion then if that's the case? I mean and they don't give the women a lot of time anyway. They pretty much give them one match a week. So mm-hmm. 
Why are you not focusing on your champion? Build up a challenger for Hikaru. And while, and after this match, it doesn't seem like Serena or Thunder Rosa are going to be Hikaru's challenger. So I don't know. I don't know. But uh, so anyway, the match. Oh, before the match. So they, pro uh, they promote that AEW heels thing. Oh, yeah. Uh, so it's like a. I guess it's like some kind of. I don't know what it is because they say it's for women. So I didn't want to be that guy and be like, hey, what is it? <laughs> you know? But it's AEW heels. I don't know what it is. It's something for female fans of wrestling. And JR in the not so line of the night, you know what I'm going to say here. JR says, in the not so line of the night, says, do they do bake sales? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh man, JR JR's trapped in 1994. You know yeah. what I mean? It's so good. It's so good. That was so terrible. Like oh. and and Excalibur and Tony just like pause for a second and just move on because <laughs> they're like, what the hell do we say to this? Like, and Tony Khan was probably in the headset yelling at him, "Don't acknowledge that. <laughs> just <laughs> just keep going." <laughs> <laughs> that never happened he didn't say that guys just keep yeah. talking about the match <laughs> so one of the things I didn't like about this match was another really dumb spot where Thunder Rosa um, what did she do she hit some kind of move and she ended up landing outside on the apron and then she starts talking to the camera yeah you know like I want the, I want the championship back I'm the best I'm going to beat her and in the meantime, Deeb uh, recovers, turns around, and she gets a couple of dragon screws through the ropes for her troubles. Like, well, you wanted the belt back so much, you decided to talk to the camera about it. I don't know about that. That that was funny to me, you know, because it was funny, just... but it made it made Thunder Rosa look like a dumbass. <laughs> well, that's what she gets. Uh, you know, if, if if Moxley did something like that, I wouldn't. I would I not would. be happy if Moxley did that. <laughs> and Moxley would never do that because he is the greatest wrestler in the world. Like he says, save one other guy. But anyway. I thought it was funny. I, I, I guess it goes into her character thinking that she's, you know. She's, is that next, her character? Next, she's thing, she's the best? I thought yeah. she was reverse Darby Allen. Reverse Darby. Yeah, I guess I could say I don't that. know. Yeah. But anyway, so, so this match wouldn't end. There were so many moves that should have been the finish, but it wasn't. So finally, so, well, not finally, actually, because Serena gets sent to the outside. Rebel starts distracting the ref. Britt comes out. She attacks Thunder Rosa, hits a move onto the ramp. Serena power bombs Thunder Rosa after the infer interference by Britt, and this gets a two count. Yeah. At this point, I was like, why wasn't this the ending? So that pretty that much should have been the end. Yeah. So that pretty much negates Brit's interference. Does it? Does it not? It does. That was odd. I thought for sure that was the end. I was like, well, this is the end, especially with a power bomb afterwards. Yeah. And just like two count. What? And for at that moment, I was like, is Thunder Rosa gonna win this after being interfered with? You know. I guess that right. that yeah. that would have been the only thing to make sense was yay thunder rosa overcame the odds she overcame Britt baker beating her up in the middle of the match and then she uh got the the win but she but as spoiler she doesn't so they do a bunch of reversals uh pin attempts and these all get twos these all get twos and then uh Ser serena hits like some crazy looking submission i don't even know how to describe it but that look i thought then that would be the submission victory it's like oh thunder rose is too beat up from brit attacking her uh, so she couldn't escape but nope she escapes she hits a double double stump uh more reversals more reversals more pin attempts um D deeb tries a pile driver position and tries to tuck uh thunder rose's arms behind her back but that gets reversed and they go through a bunch more reversals and pin attempts and then finally um Serena just grabs her, puts her in the pile driver position again, tucks her arms be behind her back, lifts her up for a pile driver position, but then falls forward. I'm guessing this is her finisher, but they never gave it a name. And that is the three count. Like, okay, like this. 
this match went yeah, on a little yeah. bit too long. I, I know I kind of see what they were going for to build the drama. Like, oh, this match can end at any time with all these reversals and pins. But especially after the Britt Baker interference, it kind of like, it kind of didn't work for me. Yeah, that should have been the end. I, I agree with you there. That match at that point was already pretty long. And for it to not end after interference and, uh, you know, what accounts to basically a finisher, I was like, uh, okay. And I was seriously considering that Thunder was going to win this. Like you said, she overcame the odds. But she didn't. It was like three more minutes of wrestling, five more minutes of wrestling, just to reach the same conclusion. Yeah. That I, that I was a little, uh, you know, not a fan of. I was against, I guess. Yeah. So <laughs> this next part was both funny and stupid at the same time. So Thunder Rosa is like, after the match, she's obviously pissed. She lost. And Britt Baker interferes, so she's outside, and she's steaming. She's pissed. She's like, ugh, ugh I'm pissed off. I, I just lost the title match. And then out of nowhere, she just runs and attacks someone in the crowd. And it turns out it was <laughs> Britt Baker! <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, I... I knew I knew Reba was in the crowd, so at first I was like, "Is she attacking Reba out of frustration?" Yeah. And then I was like, "Oh shit, it's Britt Baker!" <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> why is Britt Baker? I mean, it, I guess it's a, it's not a stretch that Britt Baker had enough time to go back into the crowd, but it's so weird. The thing that was stupid about it is Britt Baker was caught off guard. Like, oh shit, I didn't know, I didn't see this coming. <laughs> Right? It's like you attack Thunder Rosa in the middle of her match and then you go back into the crowd and like you're surprised. You like it's gonna be cool. Yeah. You're surprised cool, right? that Thunder yeah. Rosa goes and attacks you after the match and it's like what the hell? So it's a pretty bold move, right? I mean, if you're going back into the crowd, like it's almost a big <laughs> F you to the person you did that to, so you should expect them to be Yeah. You know, I mean, that was the stupid part. Is like, saucy. why was Britt Baker like surprised by this? I don't, I don't get that. But and yeah, I mean, it was cool. I guess they're gonna do a Britt Baker versus Thunder Rosa thing, which is fine. I'm fine with this because it's not about the NWA titles, and they do need more than they, well, they they need women's storylines. They don't have any. All they have is the NWA title for some reason. So I'm cool with this Thunder Rosa and Britt. I'm all, I'm all for that. Oh, one thing I one. yeah, one thing I forgot to mention on the the Jade segment when she broke Brandy's arm is after that big swole gets in Jade's face. Mm. And big I swole made the save, yeah, yeah, and I'm sure Big Swole is probably gonna lose if they end up doing a match, but too bad because I want to see Big Swole beat the crap out of Jade. I hope she doesn't lose. I, I don't know. She's got to lose because she's gonna. She's the new thing, and she's coming in with Shaq apparently, and that's not always the case. Look at Anna Jay. She was the new thing. It's different though. <laughs> it's way different. I mean, she's coming in with Shaq. You know, Shaq, mm. Shaq in AEW. I'll take things that I don't really care about or never want to see in AEW for a thousand, Alex. Shaq. Yeah. What is Shaq? Who is Shaq? Anyway, we've got a... You know what would be really like... I guess AEW wouldn't be that stupid to do it. But what if it wasn't Shaquille O'Neal? <laughs> what if it was just some other wrestler named Shaq? And it'd be like a super letdown, wouldn't it? <laughs> that would be... Yes, it would be a super letdown. But it would be an awesome bait and switch. Because all these people would be tuning in to see Shaq wrestle Cody... And it's like, we never said it was Shaquille O'Neal. Yeah. It's we, Shaq. It's Shaq. The wrestler Shaq. Yeah. He's a big guy. He's big in wrestling. <laughs> and it should be, um, what's that guy? It should be War Horse. <laughs> no, I mean, no, but yeah. I mean, it w I would laugh. I would laugh. But yeah, they shouldn't. If they're going to, it should be Shaq, Shaquille O'Neal. If they're really going to. I think that would goes, really yeah. like turn off a lot of people to AEW. Or if that happened. It's going to be very um, anticlimactic because the people you want to tune in are the like people who aren't watching you. already. Exactly. You know, like me and you, we're regular viewers already. We don't really want to see that. If you want somebody to watch for the spectacle of Shaq versus Cody, they're going to tune in that one time and that's it. They'll never come back. You know? 
So well, they'll never come back, especially if it's if it's not Shaquille O'Neal, if it's like some oh. uh, some other guy named Shaq or something. <laughs> anyway, we've Boy. got a. Uh, We've got John Silver and Anna J, and she's on a winning streak, and she's now ranked number five. So Anna J versus Hikaru Shida for the AEW Championship next week, and I guess Anna J is ninety nine. I didn't know that, but I guess her number in the Dark Order is ninety nine. And I'm like, thank, thank, thank goodness, finally, some AEW women's title action. AEW. Not NWA. Nothing against the NWA, but I'm not watching NWA Power Hour. I'm watching AEW Dynamite. So yeah. And I wouldn't care if it was a case of, you know, I just don't like how NWA title is getting top billing. That's all I'm saying. Mm. So next I can understand. Week, yeah. So we've got the lineup for next week, or a partial lineup anyway. We've got Pac and Phoenix versus The Butcher and the Blade. Will Hobbs is in action. Jericho and Hager versus SCU and Frank versus SCU, which is going to be Frankie and Daniels. So we've got our main event: Cody and Darby versus Brian Cage and Absolute Ricky Starks. But before that, we've got the weekly Darby Allen video, and he's on top of a church. And at first, I thought he was going to jump off of a church or something. And I'm kind of like, man, I I don't know about this. You know, there's some there's a lot of religious people out there. And they probably won't like this. <laughs> you know, but anyway, he's in the cathedral, in the church, on his skateboard. And I'm thinking, the religious people probably don't like this either. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but he's I'm got... surprised to... Go ahead. Yeah. But he's got a fire. So he lit a fire, I guess, in the church with the TNT championship underneath it. And I didn't think so, but the announcers seem to think that he lit himself on fire too. But I, I didn't I didn't think he was on fire. I thought he was just he just had a fire and the TNT championship was underneath it. Yeah, I didn't get that from the from the segment. Um it was kind of a it was even for Darby, it was kind of an odd one. <laughs> yeah, it, it kind of was yeah. like, okay. I mean yeah. if it I, was if 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 somebody else did this, I'd be like, what the hell was that? But since it was Darby, I was like, okay, sounds about right. Yeah. But you bring up a good point. I was surprised AEW and you know by extension TNT were like yeah this is cool <laughs> it's like oh you're like gonna you said, like you're gonna be standing in on top of a church and then you're gonna skateboard and light a fire in a church yeah we're yeah uh, we'll air this on TNT like I can't see anything wrong with this <laughs> yeah <laughs> it, it probably won't be much of a big deal but I was like ooh why take the chance you know yeah I you're probably right ninety nine percent of people even religious ones probably wouldn't take offense to it but. You know, all it takes is that vocal. All it takes is a little 1% bit. 1% vocal minority to be up in pitchforks about it. And AEW will be like, holy crap, we can never do anything like that again. You know, even even remotely like that again. You know what I mean? So. So did you notice, too, that even though Darby is now the TNT champion, the Prince of Pro Wrestling makes his entrance last? Yeah, that was odd, huh? He should have been first, considering he's not the champion. So, yeah. the, something that was really great here was what, after the Darby video plays, uh, Shivani asks, hey, Taz, what do you think of that? And Taz says, well, that's a cracker, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> and he starts just uh, writing it down. And uh, so, Taz, calls, Taz refers to Cody as Big Ego. He owns a pizzeria in Atlanta now. He's trying to pick a fight with Shaq. So Taz is always great on commentary. He's he's on par with Chris Jericho on commentary. So Ricky uh, Ricky starts off with Darby in the match, uh, and then uh, Brian Cage gets tagged in, and Taz calls it Big Cage here, and Darby tags in Cody, and is it? And here comes Big Ego. <laughs> so yeah. Like I said, Taz keeps referring to Cody as Big Ego, and for some, I don't, I don't know what they never, they kind of were. The other announcers were kind of wondering this too. But Taz leaves commentary and goes to ringside. They never really explained why, but I was sad because Taz was no longer on commentary. Yeah, he and... was on commentary for all like three minutes, maybe. Yeah, yeah it's weird. Yeah. 
And they go, they go to a break. So back from the break, Brian Cage is in control of Cody, and he goes for a tag. But Ricky pulled Darby off the apron, so no tag. Uh, action continues. Darby hits a Yoshi tonic, and it was a reversal from a power bomb on Brian Cage. Ricky breaks up the pin. So Starks teases a crossroads onto Darby, but then Cody grabs uh, Ricky and does his own crossroads. Brian Cage does a clothesline. Cody ducks, but Darby eats the clothesline. That was pretty funny. Uh, Brian hits an ab, but the action continues, and Brian Cage eventually hits an avalanche drill claw on Darby and gets the three. So it looks like that's going to be setting up a TNT title shot for Brian Cage after that. And probably in the biggest shocker in AEW history, Team Taz beats up Cody and Darby after the match. I didn't see that coming at all. Yeah. Actually, I will admit, though, they didn't do it immediately after the match. They did not it do it immediately. Good, it was a good pause. So it was, was like, like yeah, yeah gonna... we won. And we're like, okay, yeah, that's how AEW is yeah. going off the air. But it's like, ah, you know what? Since we got him here, we might as well beat him up. Look at the time, guys. We still got three minutes. That's yeah. enough time to beat their ass before AEW Dynamite leaves the air. So... They're beating up Cody and Darby, and who should come out to make the save? But none, the, uh, none other than No Answer Will Hobbs, and he comes out swinging with a chair, and Team Taz takes off. They're outside the ring. Way to and, go, Will. Yep, Will Hobbs picks up the FTW Championship, and he's like, ha, ha, ha. So it looks like he wants a shot at the FTW Championship, but nope. He whacks Cody with the, with the FTW Championship. So what is going on? It looks like Will Hobbs has joined Team Taz. So there's your answer, folks. Which kind of makes sense because we haven't gotten an answer for so long. It's kind of like, well, the answer has to be yes, right? True. Because it's been like two months. Yeah. Because if he, if, he would, if he had said no, Team Taz would have been beating him up all this time. But it was a, a secret yes, so then they're like, okay, we'll reveal it at just the right time. So I guess this is just the right time. And Brian Cage puts the TNT title, or was it the FT title? I think it was a TNT title, huh? Uh, I don't know. I'm trying to remember what happened. I know at the they end, all got to ring together, yeah. At the end, Brian Cage had the, was point, had some belt in Cody's face while Taz was talking crap to him. Oh and, yeah, it was probably the TNT title because the FTW and, title was still on on Hobbs, Will Hobbs. Yeah. yeah, and so Team Taz stands tall at the end of Dynamite, and this unfortunately got spoiled for me. Uh, like we've uh, like we've mentioned before, uh, down here in Paradiso, we do not get the show live, so I unfortunately got the big Will Hobbs turn. Oh man! Spoiled for me. I did, in fact. Oh, but that was the end of Dynamite for this week. With Team Taz standing tall at the end. So, like, like I said earlier, uh, Penta did not actually hit B Eddie Kingston or Butcher and the Blade, but here Will Hobbs did hit Cody. So, you don't get to. I don't know about Penta. I'm thinking, thinking he might, uh, he might be a double agent here. Hmm. You think Will is a double agent? Would that be a double cross? No, no, he's not a double, double agent. No. That would be dumb if he was a double agent. This is not G.I. Joe, and he's not Dusty, so there you go. He's trying to get into Team Taz so he can destroy it from within. Infiltrate Team Taz? Yes, exactly. He's trying to crush the Empire from within, huh? Yeah, it's got to. The prestigious Team Taz. Team Taz, all three of them yeah. two of them i guess if you really look at it the two wrestlers and the yeah. only championship they have is one that was <laughs> <laughs> given to them was resurrected from the depths of hell and given to them by taz because brian cage couldn't beat moxley so oh, yeah. i'm glad i'm glad this will hobbs thing has finally been resolved though i really didn't want this to go on any longer i was like he's got to turn on him now right i even wrote in my notes it says uh you know hobbs comes out with the save Dot dot dot. <laughs> oh, so you, you know? were you were expecting it then? Yeah. So you know, ten seconds later, it's like, but then he knocks out Cody instead. So, but I'm glad they resolved it. If they didn't resolve it today, if he literally just didn't give him the answer again, I was like, what's the point? What is the point? 
Oh, I'm kind of I'm was... I'm kind of sad though. Like I, I'm glad it was resolved, but I'm kind of sad because I thought Will Hobbs kind of had a really good good guy thing going on, and we've got a we've got enough big mm. bruiser types. We've got Brian Cage, we've got Brody Lee, we've got Lance Archer, we've got Hager, we've got Wardlow. All of the the big uh, the big power guys are all on the bad guy side, but here we don't really have any on the good guy side, do we? Ah, oh. uh, that's true. Maybe, maybe, maybe at some point, once T, once, because you know we know Team Taz won't last forever. It implodes. Maybe he'll turn good. Yeah, I mean, the the AW really has a they don't have a lot of Bad good guys. Guy problem, huh? They don't yeah. really have a lot of good guys. I mean, which is gonna be weird because the way it's seeming it just like... so happens the elite are all the good guys, though. <laughs> Strangely yeah, enough, that's true. Strangely how that and works. The, out. And Nightmare Family are the good guys. Yeah. yeah. Strangely uh, how that works out. It's going to be weird now that you mention that, though, that it looks like Death Triangle is going to be the good guys in that feud, huh? I'm cool with that. I like I, I like Pac. I, li- I like the Lucha Brothers. But... Pac and the Lucha Brothers are awesome, so I'm good with them being good guys. But it's just weird. I don't know. If, yeah. yeah, I mean, they, they scream bad guy. You know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you've got like a skeleton guy and a evil phoenix looking guy and <laughs> Pac is his nickname is the bastard. So he looks like a, he looks like you know a medieval wizard or something. You know <laughs> he, he does. Looks, he looks so bad. You know, <laughs> but yet they're the good guys we're rooting for. So we'll see how yeah. that goes. We'll see how that goes. Yeah, but that's another AEW dynamite. Anything else you want to add before we wrap this up? No, I'm looking forward to winter is coming though. Winter is coming. I I don't know like I thought that was a uh, yeah is that a reference to something else I don't know that's a good question outside of are are you being serious though no I'm being sarcastic obviously the Game of Thrones reference okay I I don't know sometimes with you it's hard to tell I mean it's pretty easy to tell when I'm sarcastic which is like a hundred percent all the the time time. yes yeah one hundred percent of the time all the time uh it's just odd. What a weird, I don't know. What a weird thing to call the dynamite segment, but we'll see. We'll see how it it's goes. Weird. I, 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 the only weird thing about it is like I don't think they will ever have the rights to using that name, will they? Mm, I, I don't know. I, I mean, I'm sure should. HBO or uh, George R. R. Martin or some or the publisher of I'm sure somebody else has the the trademark copyright for Winter Is Coming, right? You know, now that you mention it. You know, HBO and TNT are under the same Warner Brothers umbrella. Oh, so that's, maybe, that's true. Yeah. That's true. Uh, maybe they have that right, and they have at least the right to be able to use that phrasing. Yeah, oh, for yeah. This. I didn't think about that, but yeah, you're right. That's true. So yeah, maybe so. that's a, maybe that's the tie-in here. They're gonna announce the the new, uh, the new <laughs> Game of Thrones spin-off, spin-off, on spin-off on Dynamite or something. Could be. I I wouldn't put it past them. It wouldn't you know, be the worst TV show review on AEW Dynamite. That would go to the go home, the big go big show. The big show? The what are you talking about? Show. I I'm a huge fan of that show. I've watched you know. It didn't even premiere yet. <laughs> uh well, you seem to know a lot about this show you don't like. They plug it all the damn time. <laughs> Anyway, that's it for us. We'll see you next week. Sorry about last week, but we'll be back next week unless the world ends, which hopefully does not happen. But we'll see you then. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll we'll catch you later. Stay safe.